Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at my Kodak Retina Reflex 3. After World War II, Kodak made a bunch of different kind of cameras in their German factory, and that was the Retina series. And the original Retinas were folders that had a fixed lens, and I've got one of their models downstairs in my studio. I haven't used it yet, but they're good cameras and very reliable, really good performers. Eventually, they started to make the Reflex series. So these are SLRs as opposed to rangefinder folders. The Reflex has several different models. The Reflex itself, the Retina Reflex S, the 3, a 4, and then an Instamatic version. If you're going to shop for one, don't get the Instamatic. You're not going to find Instamatic film. It's a big hassle. I wouldn't, wouldn't do it. However, the Reflex S3 and 4 are all viable cameras. Now, there's no service available for them uh, anymore. Chris Sherlock in New Zealand is retired. He was the last actual technician that would work on them. He did, however, make a bunch of tear down and rebuild videos on these cameras, and that's what I used. I tore this completely down completely stripped every screw, every spring, and then put it back together. It was not easy. It took a long time. It was very frustrating. Now, granted, I had no experience doing it either. So if you are experienced with it, it may not be that frustrating for you. It was for me. However, I got it put back together and we went out and shot a couple of rolls. So I did a roll of black and white to test out and make sure everything worked. And then once I saw that it did, went out and shot a roll of Color Mission from Adox. I've never shot that film before either. So this is a bunch of first for me, Color Mission and using this camera. These cameras are very solid. They have a cast aluminum body, so they're quite heavy for their size. The DKL mount lens has a variety of different focal lengths for this camera in the Retina line. This is the 50 millimeter 1.9. I also have a couple of the 2.8 versions. There's a 28 millimeter 35 85, 135, and even a 200 millimeter lens. Um, I've got the 28 and the 135, as well as the two different 50 versions. They are pretty sharp. We'll look at the uh, samples here as we go. Shutter speeds go from bulb up to 500th of a second. There are some quirks with this camera. The uh, meter may or may not work depending on which one you get because they are the old battery free selenium cell type meter. This particular one does work and it is fairly accurate with Sunny 16. I don't know about low light because I use a handheld meter for almost everything. So I didn't really use the meter though it does seem to match at least the Sunny 16 rule. But other than that, it has a few different features on here. One is the wind lever on the bottom, and that can be a little odd at first, um, but I find it, it works pretty well when you shoot. It's easy to just 
wind and be ready for the next shot. It does have a shutter release lock, so it's a little button on the shutter release lever you have to push down. Uh, that way you can't accidentally do a double exposure. I don't see any way to actually intentionally do a double exposure. There may be a way in the manual, but I haven't looked. The other nice feature with these lenses is these little red tabs. I don't know if you can see that on there. They are depth of field scales, which are very, very nice. And as you change your aperture, the depth of field scales move. Some other features that are just a little odd or particular for this camera, the tripod mount is offset, so it's not centered but I have an attachment, uh, an accessory, that allows me to shift it to the middle of the camera so that it's balanced there. And then finally you have the frame counter on the bottom. So there you do have to look at the bottom of the camera to see what frame you're on, and it counts down. So instead of going from one to 36, it goes from 36 to one. Once you reach one, it will no longer allow you to advance. So you can't accidentally shoot more than 36 frames. So very interesting in that regard as well. Other than that, what is unusual about this camera versus say like um, my Minolta X700 or something like that, this does not use a focal plane shutter. It uses a leaf shutter right up front. So focal plane shutters are usually behind the mirror and directly in front of the film. In this case, it's a leaf shutter in front of the mirror. So I've got quite a bit of shutter depth here. This is all shutter and then the mirror behind it. So what this camera has to do and what makes it complex relative to some other camera designs is when you fire the shutter, there is a capping plate right here in front of the film that has to swing up, the mirror has to swing up, but that would expose your film. So the shutter has to close, the two plates swing up, then the shutter fires, and it has to do it very, very quickly. I'm not gonna show you here because um, I wanna use this as little as possible, to be honest. So do I like this camera? Yes, very much. Is it gonna be my daily user? No, not at all. And mostly it's because it's the only one I have that works. I have another one that I haven't rebuilt. And I'm not entirely confident with my rebuilding skills. So until I am sure that this camera functions as it's supposed to reliably, I'm not going to use it much. Uh, once I have the other one rebuilt eventually, then I may feel comfortable using this more often. However, it is a very fun camera to use and uh, I have somebody sending me a Reflex 4 as well that is also supposed to function so I'm going to check that one out and we may check that out with some other lenses on it. I only shot with the 50mm 1.9 on this as a first go around so once the four arrives, if it functions um, as I expect it to, we may try out some of the other lenses and see what kind of performance we get from it. The lenses also work with the Re uh, Retina 3S, which is a rangefinder camera. And I have one of those. It also needs to be overhauled because the shutter does not function currently. Because that doesn't have the complex mirror mechanism, that one I may use more often because I think it'll be a little bit more reliable. Uh, and this one may be reliable too, I'm just not sure. I'm not confident in myself until I use it a little bit more. Uh, but it is a fun camera, it is a beautiful camera. Uh, it has just really, really clean lines. The chrome plating that they put on these is very, very nice. And the lenses seem pretty sharp. I have got the Schneider lenses. There are Rodenstock lenses as well. Um, but they were not nearly as common in the US. So this is a great camera. If you can find them, pick one up. The prices range all over the place. And again, you don't really know if they're going to work reliably until you get it. 
Um, and then if you want it repaired, you're pretty much going to have to do it yourself now. So that is a drawback to these. But if you are handy and you are experienced doing it, then there should be no problem. Chris Sherlock has all those videos up on YouTube. They're really comprehensive. And uh, at least up to date, he is answering questions should they come up. So hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit about this camera. And uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed.